Hello, everybody. Howdy. Oh, my goodness. Just <laughs> had to do this. All I can do is sit and laugh and mock. Because I told this community many, many years ago. The Watchdown Babel Crap Society will have to change who and what they are. Because the 1914, this generation will not pass away until all these things occur, including the start of the Great Tribulation. That business model failed. Because that generation is dead, buried, and this organization failed at that prophecy. So they have to become a kind of gentler. Like I said back then, you're going to see this organization get more in line with mainstream Christians because they failed at the 1914 business model. Well, we even have a clip that's going to show where they should be admitting that their preaching has an epic failure, too. Well, it's done no good. What they really should be doing is apologizing to all of us for their bullshit. Yeah. All the people that have given up their lives, given up their dreams, their aspirations, because these idiots claim to be God's spokesmen here on earth. Do you trust the... Well, you know what? I'm going to get into this a little bit later because there's a specific technique that Kim and I, or at least that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later, that these guys use. And every, every Jehovah Witness should recognize this technique. Yeah. Now, before I show the clip... Yeah, Watchtower, we're going to show a clip. I want to read something because as you can tell by the title God's channel is absolutely clueless now <laughs> well, it, it, it makes you wonder after you read what you're reading and what they're saying now whose spirit were they really engaged with yeah so I have a KM here this is the September 2002 and on the back page, I'm going to read something here. There's an article that says, Avoid the pursuit of valueless things. <laughs> How about a valueless religion now? <laughs> well, I think that's the point we're trying to make. I, I think that's a, yeah, that's a real good point. They're valueless. Yeah. So in this article, I'm going to go to paragraph 5, God's appointed channel. Now remember, for the past gazillion years... They always said they were God's channel. God's channel of communication. Do you trust the faithful slave? Because they're God's channel, right? God's appointed channel. All right, the KM. Bear in mind that our Heavenly Father has an appointed channel of communication. Okay, now they're appointed by God, and the Holy Spirit directs them as the channel of communication. Not only that, bear it in mind. Yeah. That's the technique, one of. Yeah. Father has appointed a channel of communication, the faithful and discreet slave. That slave has the responsibility to determine what information is made available to the household of faith, as well as the proper time for it to be dispensed. This spiritual food is available only through the theocratic organization. We should always look to God's appointed channel for reliable information, not to a network of internet users. I thought you'd like that one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because when I went to JW.org and I typed in God's channel of communication, a ton of things came up. But the ones at the top were like from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I didn't have time to go through everything because, like I said, there is a ton of these articles. 
and I tried to find something more recent, more up to date. And it's like, oh my goodness. But the general idea was all through these years, they have been claiming to be God's appointed channel of communication. And when we play this clip here in a minute, you're going to be like, oh my God. Yeah, they're admitting they were wrong. Yeah. And like Mike said, they should be apologizing to everybody who believed this. What about all of us that got disfellowship for asking questions about God's appointed channel? <laughs> and are they really right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I've got the 1992 Bond volume here. Watchtower, November 15th. Serve Jehovah loyally. Even when Jehovah gets it wrong. <laughs> well, if this channel of communication has gotten it wrong, well, there's some kind of miscommunication between Jehovah, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the governing body, the faithful slave. <laughs> some kind of mischannel or misinformation through that channel. Or maybe who they're really channeling is the Satan. Watchtower. Right? All right. The article is Serve Jehovah Loyally. Page 19. Subheading Appreciation for the Things Learned. <laughs> no, no. You don't have to have appreciation no more because these idiots changed it. Yeah. <laughs> that tells you you don't have to appreciate a damn thing, Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Paragraph 6 starts with gratitude for the Scriptural things we have learned should move us to serve Jehovah loyally. At this point, how can any Jehovah Witness serve this organization? It's not Jehovah. How can they serve this organization loyally when they keep changing things and admitting they've been wrong in the past? We don't know. <laughs> now, well, the last sentence is in this paragraph. Remember that such knowledge came from God through the faithful and discreet slave. They have a serious problem with their communication, I think. Yes, they do. Paragraph 7. Especially should appointed elders appreciate the nourishing spiritual food provided by God through the faithful slave. I think this is why there's so many Pimo elders and so many elders waking up. Yes. Yeah. See, there are those inside of Watchtower that do care and take note of these changes. Yeah. They do care when they see somebody like Tony Morris at Bottle King. They do care when um, things are flip-flopped. They do care. That's why we call them PIMOs. Yeah. That's why this organization is full of PIMOs around this globe, because they do care big time care. And we've heard from a tremendous amount of PIMOs and we've been in contact with several PIMO elders and they all tell us the same thing. They tell us what woke them up and I'll tell you even to this day the biggest yeah. number one thing that has woken Jehovah's Witnesses and elders and Bethelites up is the Australian Royal Commission. And number two on that list is the overlapping generation bullshit, Splain. You're responsible for that, just like you are this nonsense right here. Yeah. All right, back to paragraph 7. Especially should appointed elders appreciate the nourishing spiritual food provided by God through the faithful slave. Not when they're claiming now that they've got had it wrong in the past. That's right. Years ago, a few elders lacked such appreciation. What did they do with those elders? Disfellowshipped them. Shit can them. Yeah. You owe these people an apology, Splain. One observer noted that these men were critical of the articles in the Watchtower, not wanting to accept it as God's channel of truth. Well, how do you expect, Splain, for Jehovah's Witnesses to accept 
what is in your publications and what you're saying now when you've totally flip-flopped it from years ago. Again. Yeah, because in this talk, he's talking about, you know, those divinely executed by God, like at the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, he even mentions 185,000 soldiers that were killed in Sennacherib's army. So, and, oh, we wouldn't want to be dogmatic, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, to accept it as God's channel of truth, always trying to influence others in their way of thinking. Well, it's easy to do when you guys are a bunch of clueless men. They're not even qualified to be at the head of a real corporation because these guys would be fired in a nanosecond. Yeah. They can't keep their employees. They're even telling that their employees have done such a piss poor job that they're not surprised that somebody just 10 miles away from Bethel had never heard about Jehovah. Epic failure for managers. Yeah. It, this is how simple it is to deconstruct these people. All right. So we have a clip here to play. And what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Will everyone who died in Sodom and Gomorrah sleep an everlasting sleep? The women, the children, babies. And was there not one redeemable Assyrian soldier in that band of 185,000 who died at the hand of Jehovah's angel? We don't have the answer to those questions. But we do know one thing. The merciful judge of all the earth will do what is right. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? We don't have the answer to, to those questions? I thought we did. In the past, our publications have stated that there's no hope of a resurrection for those who died in the flood or those destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah. But do we really know that? Now, did you catch what he said? Oh, wait a minute. Did I hear that right? And he says that they've had in their publications in the past that those people divinely executed by Jehovah would not be coming back. And now he's saying, well, we don't know. So he's admitting they have been wrong for a hundred and what, 40 years on this? See, their product is no good. He's changing and they're re-identifying the product because it's failed. Their business has gone right down the toilet. And he's telling you. He's blatantly telling you, wait a minute. See, he's even self-admitting that he, himself, and the rest of the buffoons are epic failures. You don't need to have a high IQ to figure this one out, friends. Yeah. Because yeah. he's telling you they failed. But that goes back to what I said years ago. That 1914 business model is dead. They have to re-identify. They have no choice. Why? Because they've been in communication with Satan. That's why they've been proliferating lies all these years. And how can I say they're a lie? Because they're admitting to it. Yeah. We were wrong. We don't know. But yet the very articles that they read, they were 100% assured of what was being printed. And if you questioned it, your ass is out of the organization. It's not difficult. Well, you're going to love the next clip then. Am I? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. Make some popcorn. Pause it and make some popcorn. I, I feel a rant coming. <laughs> Does it mean that there's no hope for any of them? Jesus' statement we just read would indicate that there is hope for some. We just can't be dogmatic. But again, we can say that the merciful judge of all the earth will do what is right. Now let's talk about the flood of Noah's day. 
In the past, we've said that any who died in the flood would not be resurrected. But does the Bible say that? Now, Noah's contemporaries certainly were wicked. Now, the Bible says that man's wickedness was great on the earth, and every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only bad all the time. So those living at that time were sinners. But did they all get a thorough witness? No one his family must have been very busy building the ark. How much time did they have for preaching? And were they able to do seldom worked territory? <laughs> now, we have found that people who live within 10 miles of Bethel have never heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. So can we guarantee that everyone living on earth uh, during that time knew of Noah and what he was doing? We can't really say that. Now, if you caught at the beginning of that clip, he's talking about the flood and those who were killed during the flood. And then he says, it, it's not the Bible. So he's admitting they went beyond the scriptures. They went beyond the things that were written. And then they made everybody believe that they were the faithful and discreet slave by having secret biblical knowledge that only Satan, I mean, that only Jehovah gave to them. And now they're admitting they went beyond because it's not in the Bible. Yeah. And then he talks about the preaching, how they have found that within 10 miles of Bethel, that there's some that don't even know who Jehovah's Witnesses are. I mean, that tells me their preaching work in that area. Bethel, you'd think everybody around there would know. That tells me that their preaching worldwide, forget just within 10 miles of Bethel, is an epic failure. It's no longer working. Nobody wants to hear their cultish manure. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm telling you guys, Pete friends, there's a reason why they're doing this. Yeah. Even though the old business model has failed and it seems like it become a kinder, gentler religion on the surface, but I guarantee you behind closed doors, they're going to push the same crap. And I'm going to, I'm going to hopefully help you understand this mechanism and what it really is. So now we're going to talk about trauma bonding. Oh, you want me to do that now? Okay. All right, guys. I've had this scripted out for a wow. couple of weeks now. And I've been a little reluctant to do it because there really is a tremendous amount involved with the topic of trauma bonding. A lot of research. And until recently, I really didn't know, I never even heard of what trauma bonding was. And I know a vast amount of you friends have never even heard of it either. But understand when it comes to the topic of trauma bonding, it's really, it really coalesces in relationships between like a husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, when one of those partners is an absolute narcissist. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why it's been taking me a little while to do this is because everything that I'm going to present forward from here on out on this topic, um, I will relate it to Watchtower and the Bible and that God Jehovah. And if you're a Trinitarian, your God Jesus does the same thing. Especially when you try to make Jesus the same as the God in the Old Testament. It's called trauma bonding because you're dealing with, with a complete and total narcissist. Well, we've also been noticing that in other cultures throughout the world it isn't just husband and wife in those relationships but it's religion yeah government you name it well see in there again a while back I did a video on uh, religious trauma and this is actually 
related to religious trauma. In fact, you know, um, last week we had to go shopping and I happened to be walking down the aisle and there was another gentleman passing me and he had a t-shirt that had something printed on it. And it was interesting because I stopped him so that I could read it, you know, very plainly. And it said, it's not about religion. It's about your relationship with God. Now at that point, knowing what I know now, I would have um, engaged him in further conversation other than, hey, I like what your shirt says, but we were busy and you could see that he was kind of busy too. But it's interesting how people are beginning to recognize and they're no longer afraid to print it on their t-shirts. It's not about religion. It's not about the Bible. Right. So, and you, it doesn't take a whole lot of research to understand this concept of trauma bonding. So what I want to do is I want to discuss some of the points, which is seven points that should help you realize that you're involved in a relationship that's actually based on trauma bonding. Now I find this interesting because the seven points that I'm going to um, refer to here came from a channel called Seacoast Church. And I find it a little disconcerting that he's trying to project to his audience, helping them realize that in their personal relationships they might be involved in a you know, narcissistic trauma bonding relationship and can't himself recognize that the God of the Bible has done the exact same thing. And I'm going to point it out by the seven points that he refers to in a trauma bonding relationship. It, it's just amazing to me. Well, we watched the channel Dr. Romani. Yeah. And, you know, she has covered this several times also. And yeah. once you watch those videos, then a lot more starts popping up from other psychologists about this religious trauma or trauma bonding. Trauma bonding. And it's even interesting to note that a person will leave a narcissist that holds them captive through trauma bonding that relationship's broken, and then they go right into another relationship, and they're once again caught into a trauma bonding relationship. This is why I go after the Bible. Jane Doe does the same thing, is because you friends have to recognize the control mechanism. And as I go through these, you're going to realize that every one of these seven points applies to Watchtower and what these men have done to all of us, myself and Kim included, okay? But the thing is, is that you have to do the study. You have to do the research so that you're not enslaved, once again, to a religion or another relationship through trauma bonding. Okay, so let's take a few minutes and just explore these seven markers of what is involved in a trauma bonding relationship. And once again, remember, this primarily relates to a relationship with a narcissist. But Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus, governing body, the governing body <laughs> they are absolutely narcissist. And these seven points prove it. The number one thing is love bombing. <laughs> Interesting See? that we have always talked about how Watchtower love bombs those newly interested ones. And then once you're baptized, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but see, here's the thing about the love bombing is that your God Jehovah, the biblical God Yahweh, He's the one, he's the one that condemned every person to death because of wanting knowledge, but yet that same God that condemns you to death loves you. It's going to give you everlasting life if only you obey him and him only. See, in a narcissistic man-woman relationship that 
and if the narcissist is a man, they will become very abusive towards their partner, their spouse, whomever. I don't know. They might even get caught masturbating the porn. But I love you. Don't don't leave me. I, and then they shower them with love. And then they go to reaffirm their undying love. And all these expressions of love are put forth. Well, look at even just the domestic abuse. Yeah. You know, they'll beat the crap out of their partner, send them to the hospital, and then beg for forgiveness. It'll never happen again. You know, I was just really angry. I love you. I won't do it again. Trauma bonding. And this point that since Jehovah declared everybody sinners for the acquisition of knowledge, he's the one that can now... He's the only one that can now come out and fix it, which leads, which leads to point number two, which is trust and dependency. Do you trust the faithful and discreet slave? Jesus does. But now, what are they doing? They're flip-flopping. We don't know. But yet, look at what else they've said. Brothers, you don't need to spend much time in studying research because we got qualified brothers to do that for you. So see, trust Independency. After the love bombing comes the thought of trust and dependency. Well, look at they have always said rely on the organization, and when it gets to the great tribulation, the elders are going to be there to protect you and help you. It's always been this entire organization is about trust and dependency. You know. Teach your kids and everybody to trust the elders no matter what. Yeah. And look at what's happened. And, and now you Jehovah's Witnesses and even us ex-Jehovah's Witnesses realize now that at the start of the Great Tribulation, the ark door is still open. Remember? They told us multiple times the second the Great Tribulation starts your that that spiritual arc door is closed now they've reopened it see but now they're trying to become a kinder gentler cult. cult but they're still going to employ these tactics that lead to trauma bonding because they're still using that book the bible okay now point number three is that once they've got your love They've done the love bombing, then they get your trust, their dependency, then comes the criticism. Hey, wait a minute, didn't you just read an article about how some were criticizing and then they got shit canned? Right there, trauma bonding. Yeah, are you hold soul to Jehovah? We don't see you out in service. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then look at how Watchtower reverses the blame. Well, see... Brother Brooks and Sister Brooks left because they didn't trust us. Because they found some of the things that we said and did, uh, you know, not to be, you know, spiritual or however it is that they want to spin, spin that bullshit at that time. Do you remember your father when he was an elder and that family that became apostates and left? What mm -hmm. did he say? Oh, well, they didn't remain loyal to Jehovah. No loyalty. See, and isn't that what I read in that paragraph? Yeah. yeah. About remaining loyal to the organization. See, and part of that trauma bonding concept when it comes to criticism, even though you may wake up and leave, Watchtower is going to continue to indoctrinate your family with the fact that you left the organization and you become Satan's little helper. See, they're going to pass the blame on to you. Wait a minute. Let me digress. Didn't some leaked emails from another narcissist get leaked about he blamed his wife for all of their problems? Same thing as Watchtower. Trauma bonding. Well, look at our moms. The, yeah. the last letter I did get from my mom where she said, don't ever contact me again. I got the blame for breaking up the family. Yeah, yeah. What did I do? <laughs> yeah, and that's how narcissists operate. Even a narcissistic 
organization, and even a narcissistic God. Okay? Now, the fourth point. Manipulation or gaslighting. Oh, Mikey, the oh. watchtower doesn't do that. But I trust the faithful slave because whatever they say, they're getting direction from Satan. I mean, Jehovah. I mean, Jesus. It's gaslighting. And this is what a narcissist does. Okay? So that really goes without saying. Okay? They make you feel like you're the crazy one. You're the inadequate one. But yet, you just heard Splain say that 10 miles away, there are some that have even heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. So the, the deficiency belongs to them. Yeah. They have to blame everybody else. See? Yeah. Which causes them to change their story. And look at what Splane's doing now. They're changing the story. Well, you know, those that were divinely executed by Jehovah are not in line for a resurrection. When the Great Tribulation starts and that spiritual arc door closes, there's, there's no last-minute conversion, and now it's all changed. That's gaslighting at, at its very basic truth. My goodness. But yet the biggest thing about gaslighting, and this is where it's very, very dangerous in these relationships, they will get you to doubt yourself. Now, case in point, every single XJW or every JW that wakes up and leaves at some point is a little twinge. You could be driving to work one day and say, oh my God, what if they're right? Self-doubt. Trauma bonding. It works. And they're going to do it again. Okay? Number five, they get you to give up control. You give your entire life to them. All of your, all of your goals, all of dreams. your aspirations, dreams. Hopes. Put those on hold until after the thousand years. You'll have a thousand years to master playing the drums. You'll have a thousand years to be the best piano player. You'll have, but what you, I need you to do right now, Jehovah needs you to go and warn the wicked. Otherwise, he'll be asking their blood back at your hands. Trauma bonding. Jehovah is the one that said that. All these idiots did was repeat what Yahweh has already stated through one of their idiot prophets. Yeah, they become the master. Yeah. Faithful and discreet slave? No, it's faithful and discreet master. Yeah, and it's interesting is that they have such control over the lives through this trauma bonding that those that are still Jehovah's Witnesses will go out of their way to defend their lies. Just look at all the trolls underneath all everybody's videos and on social media and stuff. Look at what they do. They cause. It, it's such a deep, indoctrinated thing that they make families shun one another. Trauma bonding. Okay, which leads to the sixth point. Very good segue, Kim. Thank you. Losing yourself. Losing your own identity. You actually lose the will to fight back at these guys or in a narcissistic relationship. You lose the will to live. You lose yourself. See, now when it comes to this cult, Jehovah's Witnesses, I completely get it when it comes to the Pimos. Because you are trying to not only leak us pertinent information, like these videos, but you're also trying to, in some way, help wake up your family members and help them break that trauma bonding association with Watchtower. 
okay? Yeah. Which also leads into number seven. Some are addicted to this cycle. There are those that way back then with the overlapping generation bullshit, I don't know what it means, but I'm going to still stick with it. Yeah, this doesn't sound right, but I'm going to still stick with it. Why? Because the very God that they put in front of your face, the very God that they put in front of your face in that Bible, he's the one that passed sentence of death. He's the one that caused the flood. How many people did Jehovah kill due to disobedience? Jehovah allowed the genocide, okay? God told Moses to kill all the babies and women that have not known the ways of a man. How many people did God kill because David took a census? How many people would Jehovah kill in Armageddon? But guess what? He loves you. Come on, people. Figure out how to break from this vicious trauma bonding cycle. See? Because Jehovah loves me, but he hates everybody else. The Bible is full of people. Well, hell, hell. David Splain even says it himself. He sent an angel to kill 185,000 men of Sennacherib's army. So just add another 185,000 men right there. Well, he mentioned Sodom and Gomorrah several mm -hmm. times, and he says, yeah. the women, the children, the babies. And it's like, you don't yeah. realize what you're saying, Splain. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, this is the problem with trauma bonding, okay? Now, out of all of the things that I just explained that this God did, as it's recorded in our modern-day Bibles, yet this is the same God that you can quote in John 3, 16, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. That's not unconditional love. That's trauma bonding from a narcissistic God. It's not difficult to figure this stuff out. It's really not. But you have to take the time that when you look at some of this stuff regarding trauma bonding relationships between a man and a woman or whomever, it absolutely applies to organizations like Watchtower because these men are narcissists. That's all they are, okay? Now this trauma bonding works from a narcissist because it keeps you in their fantasy world. God loves you. That's why he sent Jesus to cover your sins. But there again, they'll never acknowledge that that, that salvation cycle is only based on exercising faith in Jesus. If you don't exercise faith in Jesus, well, you're just banter fodder. That's all you are. That comes from a, not, a narcissistic God that only holds you through the threat of harm. It's called trauma bonding. Now, I'm going to put a link down below to Dr. Romani, um, if I can find that video again, or to her channel, I, so that you can watch this. She's a very good psychologist. Um, in fact, she lives in central Arizona, where we mm -hmm. are originally from. But she's really good, and um, she can explain things in very simple terms that the layperson can understand. Right. So, just some closing thoughts. Trauma bonding, when it comes to this Bible and the God that Watchtower is holding up, that is not unconditional love. It's love with a noose around your neck. And that's how narcissists operate. Well, how is that free will? It's not free will. It's not. Free, it's, it's not, okay? So, Kim and I, our driving motivation in this community has always been to help people understand the lies that are coming out of Watchtower's mouth and or 
the contradictions in the Bible. It cannot be unconditional love if you have to exercise faith to get eternal life. That's not unconditional. That's love with a collar around your neck. Okay? And Kim and I have always been brave enough to point these things out no matter where they come from and or no matter who they might upset. Because truth is truth, no matter who speaks it. It's never been with Kim and I how many subs we can get. That's why we don't social network with other YouTubers that have platforms bigger than us. Because that's not who we are. We don't need that to add content or context to our lives. We don't need that. We don't care if we lose 10 subscribers over a video such as this. Because that's not who we are. What we care about is helping people understand at this point what trauma bonding is and what keeps you connected to Watchtower. And I, once again, I find it interesting. Those seven points come right out of a minister's mouth, but yet he can't identify that God <laughs> in the Bible is the very thing that he's talking about. That's what's so funny and ironic about this. It's like, wow, you don't see it in your own religion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, Kim and I, we, we recognize all too well through our study and our research that not everybody's going to agree with this at any particular moment in time. And once again, some will even leave because you're going to find this offensive. There again, all I can say to you, friends, is enjoy your freedom. But now that you understand what seven steps of trauma bonding is, don't make the mistake and get into another relationship that is that binds you through trauma. Don't do it. You are a free, sovereign being. We're e all God's children. Exercise that and learn to resonate up here. It's not a matter of being more spiritually enlightened than anybody else. It's a matter of being able to think, to reason above here so that you can see the bear trap that you're about to step into once again. Now, there have been some already that have asked us why we're not spending a lot of time covering the, um, the um, annual, meeting. annual meeting. Thank you. Well, here again, I don't want to waste my time any more than I want to waste you guys' time watching this bullshit. I said it years ago. The 1914 business model is dead. My very, very first video... I held up the reasoning book and I said, I will use this book and destroy you. Now they don't even want to use that book. <laughs> well, but, you know, we heard these clips. Um, I think it was in Soundtrack of My Life's yeah. Terry. Uh, video. Very good job, Thank Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Because it showed me where to go look in the annual meeting to get this. And we appreciate that. And the reason we're covering it now is because this was a prime example Splain's talk was a prime example of trauma bonding. Oh, yeah. Oh, did I hear that right? Yeah, we were wrong, but this is what we're saying now. And, yeah, we're still God's channel. See? This is the gaslighting that they do. Yeah. The yes. This is the prime example of manipulation. Exactly. Because your family members... My mother's included, so I'm not excluding my mother or my cousins, and I'm sure you're not excluding your mother and your sister and brother. They're all bonded to narcissistic bullshit fear because they have not learned to live life by their own league. They live life through the fantasy world that Watchtower projects through the use of the Bible, okay? This is trauma bonding bullshit at its finest. And Watchtower and Babel Crap Society are a prime example of what being bond to a narcissistic bullshit religion 
is all about. Now, how do you avoid getting sucked back in? Because obviously, what Watchtower is doing now for all of the ex-members, now that that arc door is not going to be closed, the nanosecond Armageddon starts, but sometime during Armageddon, you can still return to Jehovah. Okay? What you need to do to avoid that bullshit is get yourself a piece of paper. Okay? And at the top of it, write how to avoid a trauma-bonded relationship. And look and write down two columns. One column, write down everything that you liked about this bullshit relationship with Jehovah and his faithful and discreet slave. And then in the next column, write down what you don't like about it. Even include the flip-flopping of doctrines. Include the shunning. Include the lies. They put on JW.org. Do Jehovah's Witnesses shun? No! Yes, they do. The problem in the gaslighting with that statement is they're using the word shunning, and that's a word Jehovah's Witnesses don't use. They use disfellowshipping, which is the same thing. Gaslighting! So write down those columns. How many of you can honestly... Write in a positive comment column that you liked going out in service. How many of you can now honestly take that and move that to the column that you dislike now that the rank and file no longer have to track the amount of hours to get recognized by Jehovah? See? It's all changing because the business model has failed. But once you get those two columns written out, and if you have that little twinging thought that, oh my God, what if they're right? Or the next time they throw some bullshit out like this, look at that piece of paper and balance it out. You're going to have a whole lot of things about this organization that you do not like. And that should be the scale you look at. Well, the systemic CSA problem should be at the top. That should be at the very, very top. Exactly. Yeah. So anyhow, guys... That's all I got with a lot of emotion because I understand what Watchtower has done and what they will continue to do to its people, your family members, and us included. Yeah. And just know that we love you all and that's all we want. You know, that is our main goal is just to help all of you to think critically and to notice, to realize what was done to all of us, this religious trauma, how it affected all of us. All of us have it. All of us have this baggage. All of us have those buttons in our head. We just have different degrees mm -hmm. of, you know, this trauma bonding. So, you know, that's why we have been researching this and watching a lot of videos and listening to a lot of psychologists just to get the feel for this, like, okay, this happened to all of us, one way or another. And if we can help you to recognize it and say, yeah, yeah, I need to cut that tie. And unfortunately, our JW family, they are still in this very abusive, narcissistic relationship with this organization. Yeah. And honestly, guys, trauma is nothing more than fear. They're using a fear tactic to keep you attached to them. Just like a narcissist does. If a narcissist, if the woman leaves or tries to leave the narcissist male, he's going to make her feel that she cannot get along in life without him. And that's what Watchtower does. You can't get along in life without Jehovah's organization. Fear Trauma bonding, it's all one and the same. And the one thing that a narcissist hates more than anything is when they recognize that you no longer fear them. And no longer let them control you. Right. Look at the sincerity on my face. The one thing the narcissist hates is when you lose fear 
of them. And that includes some narcissists in this community. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Thank you for all the cards and emails and phone calls. We appreciate it. And we love you and you have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.